Japan has been on a security pact signing spree in the new year. Last week, it inked two agreements with the U.S. at uh, the U.S.-Japan Security Consultative Committee, or 2 plus 2 meeting, and one more with Australia, or within 48 hours. Could this be interpreted as an... Uh, an arms race in light of the historical differences between China, between Japan and the U.S. Uh, what is driving Japan closer to the United States and Australia? And uh, what is the impact on Japan's relations with China? For this and more, I'm pleased to be joined by Professor Da Wei who is director of the Center for International Security and Strategy from Tsinghua University. We may reach out to uh, Professor Takesato Watanabe of the Department of Media Studies at Toshisha University, joining us from Kyoto on the line in a moment. So, uh, Professor Da, thank you very much for joining us. The joint sp statement after the U.S.-Japan 2 plus 2 meeting says that China is trying to pose political, economic, military, and technological challenges to the region and the world and the two countries will work together to deter and if necessary respond to destabilizing activities in the region so what is your understanding of uh, what the meeting is really about thank you first of all uh, thank you Xin, for having me uh, to this point um, to the topic I think uh, Japan and the US through this announcement and meeting, uh, I, I think it's quite clear that the two countries are moving towards a closer cooperation or even uh, upgrade their uh, alliances and facing China's rise. I think this is a trend that, that we have already witnessed for more than 20 years, I think since this century, but uh, given the newest uh, development uh, of China-US relations, I mean, the tension between China and the U.S., I think the, uh, I think Japan has already made up their mind, have already made their decision, try to uh, join uh, the United States, to stand closer to the United States, and uh, try to deal with so-called uh, challenges from, from China. Mm. So I, probably we will see more cooperation, mm. more actions from these two countries in the coming year. Okay. Um, before I go to our Japanese guest, I still want to stay with Da, uh, Professor Da. Now, Chinese uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Wang Wenbing said on January the 7th that the U.S., Japan and Australia are ganging up to form a clique targeting other countries in practice and flexing muscles for military intimidation. And this runs counter to the trend of peace and development in the region and contradicts their self claimed opposition to pressure and coercion. Help us understand why China sees it this way, Professor Da. What does China see as the potential outcome of these moves? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, in, um, since the Cold War, the U.S. have five bilateral alliances here in the region. You have, those are five bilateral ones. One of them, are, one of them is U.S.-Japan. And of course, U.S. Uh, US ROK, U.S. the Philippines, U.S. Thailand and U.S. Uh, Australia. Those are five, we call it hub and spoke, mm. right? This is the traditional structure. But for, very, for quite a few years, I think uh, there is a very strong concern uh, among Ch uh, Chinese and other countries that these five bilateral uh, alliances may evolve into a multilateral bloc. Mm. I think this, if that comes true, that will be, a, I think, a major step and, and uh, the AUKUS we have already seen last year uh, among uh, the US, UK, and uh, Australia, I think is an uh, initial step uh, building a, a trilateral or multilateral uh, uh, clip or uh, uh, a block in the region. And if and now the, uh, Japan enhanced their cooperation with Australia, which is one of the member of AUKUS, mm. so that means the you know the the spokes um, enhanced they are increased their their cooperation. So those hub hub and spoke um, is are moving towards a network or even a multilateral um, blocks that will be a major uh, change in the security structure in this region and the 
from China's perspective, it's quite dangerous. Mm. And Japan and uh, the U.S. agreed on two packs, as I said, on that two plus two meeting. And this came on the heels of Japan signing a new security pact with Australia on January the 6th. It's first such pact with any other country other than the United States, which will allow Japan and Australia to deploy defense forces from each other's bases. So, Professor Watanabe, what are Japan's considerations behind what appears to be nothing more than a security paranoia. Why does Japan see China as a, as a threat? Japan is put into a very difficult situation in the relations with the United States, considering the benefits of Japanese people. It's because China is now one of the greatest leaders of the world, not only economically, but also politically. Japan has been involved in the colleague of the United States, and China was not like that so far, especially in recent period of time, the economic growth of China gave the menace on the surface to Japan and also to the United States. But Japanese people love the peaceful connections, peaceful relations with the neighboring country, China. And also, as a person who was involved in the ping-pong diplomacy 50 years ago, as an officer of the Japan Table Tennis Association, mm. myself, Watanabe, want to have the better relations with any country for the benefit of the people of Japan and for the global peace, especially Chinese people, China is the closest country from Japan, and Chinese people are very friendly, economically developing, so they, we must have the very close relations and cooperation with mm. the Chinese government and the Chinese people. Okay. So I, I am against the yeah. recent uh, movement hit by, headed by the United States and Australia and some Japanese politicians. I see. This is my idea I for the world peace. I see. Um, Professor Da, uh, of course, that, that is a very important message and the wish of many people uh, in China and in Japan and in the region. However, there have been concerns raised by uh, some Japanese politicians or some Japanese political forces talking about, you know, uh, increased challenges or even threats from China or they see their priority as countering China. Are these concerns uh, any way, in any way justified or grounded in facts? Uh, I think, um, of course, if we, if I were Japanese, uh, you know, sitting in Tokyo in in Japan, you will you, you can see a, a, a giant country rising uh, to your west. Of course, I can, to some extent, I can understand the concerns that many Japanese have. Uh, that said. We, we, we should not simplify the, the uh, bilateral relations between China and, uh, and uh, Japan. This is a very complicated relationship, as our uh, Japanese colleague has already pointed out. Yeah, we have some historic tension, and we have, of course, security problems, like we have dispute, uh, dispute uh, territory. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, we have very close economic cooperation, and we have very close people-to-people, -people, strong people-to-people -people tie, particularly before the COVID pandemic. So, I mean, this is a very complex picture, um, China and Japan. To, sim to, to simplify this very complicated picture into a security tension, I think, this is wrong. I okay. think this is wrong, yes. Mm. Let me go back to Professor Watanabe. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida made his first phone call with Chinese President Xi Jinping in October last year after taking office, as uh, Nikkei Asia reported and other media. He said that Japan and China must take the opportunity to build constructive and stable relations. Uh, is Japan or is the Japanese government keeping its word by taking these moves, these security uh, packs with the uh, U.S. and Australia? 
Prime Minister Kishida is, is a, a nice person in personality. However, uh, his party, I mean, the, the local party within the LDP is not so strong. So always when he decides the very big issue, uh, yes or no, he must consult with former Prime Minister Kishi and also former Prime Minister Suga. And so those people are very, very rightist. So uh, Mr. Kishida want to be the French more closely with China and Chinese people. Mm. But when he consult with the, those the consultants, the former prime ministers, he must change his attitude. So th this is the, uh, our worries. How, on how, you see, we can go hand in hand with the Chinese people. Of course, you see, Japan is, is put into a very delicate position between United States and, and China because they are two biggest nations economically and militarily speaking. But Japan should be friends with both. But now, you see, Japan is facing or looking at 80% or 90% for the benefits of the United States. This is very dangerous. I see. Uh, finally, um, Professor Da, we know uh, the Chinese uh, Council General in Osaka, Mr. Xue Jian, has just uh, recently made an interview where he said Sino-Japanese relations are hovering at a very low level and there are negative elements which are threatening to make China into an enemy and uh, poisoning bilateral relations. He also called on Japan to be more rational and not make historic mistakes as it chooses to be either the hunting falcon of Western hegemony or a guardian of Eastern virtuous governance. And this is to borrow the words from Sun Yat-sen, uh, a Chinese revolutionary forefather, which was uttered in 1924 in Japan. Uh, is his, how pertinent is his warning? Yeah, I think he's... Uh his warning, I think, is really very uh, relevant, I think. I think Japan, and as our Japanese uh, colleague pointed out, feels that it's sandwiched between um, China and the, the U.S. But actually, the U.S. is not a small, uh, Japan is not a small country. The U.S., uh, Japan is the third largest economy. Uh, I think Japan can play an independent role. Uh, I understand that US, uh, Japan is uh, one of the islands of the U.S., so there is some kind of security cooperation. It's understandable, but Japan and China, we are economic partner, and I think the, uh, Japan and the China, Japan should uh, increase its cooperation, encourage its cooperation with China, rather than join the U.S. and other countries try to uh, compete uh, uh, compete with China even economically and also joint the West effort, try to impose sanction over China's high tech mm. uh, industry and uh, the or embargo. I think this uh, kind of effort, I think, is of course not in the interest of the bilateral relations, but also not in the interest of Japan. So I really hope that Japan can at least, at least play a constructive role in economic front. Nice. And then, of course, need to understand the concern, China's concern over the security issues. Okay, we have to leave it there. And uh, let's keep a close watch on the situation as 2022 will mark the 50th anniversary of the normalization of bilateral ties. Many thanks to Professor Dawei and uh, Professor Takesado Watanabe joining us from Japan. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, our Moscow and Xi'an experts will help us analyze the recent turmoil in Kazakhstan and what factors could be behind it. Stay with us.